sendiri di, di blog.
So. Great. Um, good afternoon. I think maybe we should start in um, in the coming two minutes. Yes, good afternoon. Um, I think we should start in the coming two minutes. It was this proposal actually uh, for us to move and to be in front, even if the room is, is really huge. But uh, so we follow this, we can have a real, uh, you know, face-to-face -face debate. Uh, good afternoon once again. My name is uh, Julia Morenitz, and um, I represent this organization, TAC, Together Against Cybercrime International, uh, who has as one of the project, uh, the project called Youth IGF. Uh, and we are here with the young people from five countries today. Uh, to discuss a number of, of topics, and we would like, first of all, to thank uh, the European Parliament delegation uh, for, for coming and for accepting this, uh, this, this exchange. Um, so, as you know, maybe I should introduce a little bit what is, this, what is the youth IGF movement about and, um, and what are the achievements, and then present the, the young people um, that are close, uh, close to me. Uh, so, as you know, the Youth IGF actually movement uh, has been created in 2011 in France uh, with the idea and uh, with the debate that we had at the MAC uh, multi stakeholder advisory group meeting at the IGF in 2011 that it should be more engagement from the young people and actually that the voice of the young people needs to be uh, and needs to be represented here at the IGF. And so from there, we, we organized the first gathering in France of the young people to discuss internet governance with the particular topics that they've uh, made the choice of. And we presented the results at the IGF in 2011 as well. So from there, it, it, has, been, uh, it has been born, it has been developed. Uh, and then today, we, have, uh, we managed to have 35 countries around the world with us. When I say we managed to have 35 countries, it means that we have leaders in, the th in, in these 35 countries, practically, who organize debates on Internet governance. Uh, and we were quite lucky to, uh, to bring five of them from five different continents today. Um, <clears throat> the idea, the following, is not only to raise the awareness on what is Internet governance about in these countries, but also to transfer the knowledge to them and also to initiate the, the interest uh, on internet governance and other topics that they have chosen. So from the debates <clears throat> last year, practically, w there were chosen uh, four uh, topics that they would like to work, organize the debates, uh, the gatherings, which is the cybersecurity on how to, the young people can practically raise the awareness of other uh, young on internet safety. This is also a general main internet governance topic. It's also the distribution of fake medicines uh, online and gender balance and practically the promotion of the digital for her uh, strategy um, in, in different uh, countries all over the world. Actually, they are organizing the digital for her cafes. So I would like just uh, uh, present them briefly and then, uh, and then maybe start. We have Maria from Ukraine, if you can maybe, uh, you know, identify yourself. We have Junior from Haiti present here. Uh, we have uh, Michelle from Lebanon, Agita from uh, Indonesia. We have Bernardo for, from Portugal. I've seen um, Abdel Lalil from, um, from Chad as well in the room. And probably we have other young people who joined the, the debate that are not part of the movement, but we are welcome to, uh, to be part of the debate. So I don't know if um, maybe the delegation of the European Parliament uh, that will be joined by the ICANN CEO, Goran Marby, in a few minutes, you would like to, um, to, to introduce as well the, the delegation maybe to, to start this, this exchange. Thank you very much, and it's a very good tradition that during this IGF we have an opportunity to talk and meet with the youth IGF. Uh, is there any of you who has been there before? 
No. Uh, among us, I know some of uh, us are veterans of uh, two or uh, maximum three times, I guess. But any, uh, anyway, it's a very good initiative and, and a reminder that we can meet uh, with, with each other as we only represent one continent and one part of the continent, but the European citizens in, in European Union, in the European Parliament. So we are all uh, elected members of the European Parliament from different countries, and uh, we are six uh, members of Parliament here. My name is Mia Petra Kumpula Natri, and I'm a Finn from Finland, uh, and I'm representing Socialist and Democrats group. Uh, I do have here Julia Ward from Great Britain in the UK, uh, who is also representing uh, SND, uh, the same uh, political group. Then uh, on the left from her we have uh, Gunnar Högmark from Sweden, who is uh, representing European People's Party. Uh, then we have uh, Jana Tom here. Uh, oh, sorry, first, uh, <laughs> here I have advisors who I don't re uh, represent. They are working for us as a staff. So I go through the members of parliament. So Jonathan Bullock here. Uh, from uh, UK as well, uh, representing the uh, EFDD political group. Uh, next one is Julia uh, Jana Tome from Estonia, uh, and she is uh, representing the Liberals group. Uh, and then uh, uh, Julia Reda, Julia or Julia? Julia, Julia Reda from Germany, and uh, representing the Greens. Uh, in the parliamentary group. So we are six members of the European Parliament and, and I'm very happy to have this opportunity to, to have a, a chat with you. Uh, also we do have or should have here the ICANN president uh, already. Do we have him? Um, he's coming at two he, actually. Okay, uh, we, we will wait uh, when you th probably see him coming then let him have a word. So uh, we, we do have at the same time that this one we have the session, European Parliament session in Strasbourg. So many of us, we only can stay here for a day or two uh, out of these three days. Uh, so it's very important and nice that we can start with you. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm uh, very much wait forward your representation. Uh, what you will, what have you, how, what have you worked? And I had a hint that you have a few topics you want to discuss and, and uh, be debating tonight uh, and this uh, one hour session we have and from our side uh, it has been uh, prepared that majority most of us we want to dedicate for the multi-stakeholder uh, agreements globally and then also support strongly this kind of IGF so that we do have a governance that gives us the ma main uh, values that European Union is based on. It is the freedom of speech, it is the democratic uh, structures for societies and then uh, we have been working a lot on the European values that we can bring on for the uh, new times of the digitalization and then digital uh, forums also. Sometimes it's for the politician, it's a bit technical and difficult, but then we have been working a lot uh, on many uh, legislative uh, proposals that have been carried on in Europe. Unfortunately, or it, it's, it's uh, self-evident that European Union cannot work for the global issues, but we can uh, make legislation for European Union and for uh, then our internal markets and, and the rules that have to be obeyed when we uh, work on the European Union. But at the same time, we see the challenge that Internet is global, uh, technological solutions are global, but at the same time we are here and elsewhere also emphasizing that for us it is important that even this new technology, whatever it brings along, can uh, support some values as human rights. And we are actually, uh, actually want to underline also the, the, the human right part, what is uh, privacy that we think that the privacy is important human value as well and then that has been uh, carried on in the legislative files that we have agreed in the European Union, for example the GDPR uh, regulation. So sometimes we do have a global impact when we do legislation inside the European Union as we say that at least in Europe you have to respect this one and then it might have the global impact, global uh, fingerprint on the technical solutions that will be then later followed by the many giant technological platforms as well. But then let this be a very short introduction from our side, but we are very eager to have your 
say and start discussion after you maybe present what you have prepared. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just before going to the country uh, introduction, uh, maybe we need to underline two things that a number of figures, I think the movement, and as I mentioned, these 35 countries where the activists, um, youth activists organize events and debates on internet governance, also promote this multi-stakeholder approach, were around uh, uh, 5,000 plus already and quite active on social media. Uh, in all these countries, they have uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the social uh, accounts and networks per country. And also another thing that I think might be interesting to underline that a lot of activities that are organized at the country level, actually they are inspired also by the European Union um, policies and, uh, and um, and campaigns that exist, for example, uh, that is why these three topics have been chosen for the discussion today, for example, cyber security and a number of countries, um, roughly 20 countries have organized during the European cyber security month activities in their countries and they will be presenting them shortly. Uh, afterwards, we have this distribution of fake medicines online. This is very much inspired by the European Union policies as well, as well as the gender equality and the promotion of the, of the digital for her um, um, strategy. Uh, they just uh, came to us by saying, well, we would like to organize, particularly in Africa, would like to organize the digital for her cafes to bring the knowledge of uh, IT and ICTs uh, to, the, to the women in order to empower them. So just... Um, I would like maybe, uh, you know, invite you to present uh, what uh, has been your achievements in, in your country per continent, so to give, you know, uh, more information to the delegation as well. So, Marie, if you would like to start. Thank you. Um, I'm Maria from Ukraine, and for, we had a few events, for example, for European Cyber Security Months, uh, namely two events. Um, and one of them particularly was a debate on privacy issues connected to cybersecurity. And well, the second event was, uh, it was mainly about the Korean cybersecurity because in Ukraine it's a serious problem. The lack of uh, qualified cybersecurity experts has been growing for a few years now. And also, as you've mentioned, like uh, women in IT, uh, we've also distributed uh, this information about this event, about our, um, well, uh, we had a lot of women in there too, uh, because we cooperated with uh, Women Who Code Network in Ukraine. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Junior from AET. I work with young people. We, with awareness, people about cybersecurity. Last September, we organized the first youth, the first IGF in Haiti with ISOP. We take it is very important for Haiti because uh, people don't protect themselves on social networks. Merci. Thanks. Bonjour. C'est Michel Chamas from Lebanon. Uh, we started uh, our youth IGF in Lebanon last year. Uh, our main target are uh, young leaders and NGOs. Uh, we had uh, several seminars about cybersecurity mainly. Uh, and we, we need to achieve, uh, we are talking about the trending issues in cybersecurity. Uh, and we're trying to uh, affect all the young people and their parents also, and the young leaders. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Agita from Indonesia. So, um, on the 1st of November, so just a couple of um, weeks ago, we had our youth IGF Indonesia together with IGF Indonesia with the support from the Minister of Communications and IT of Indonesia. Um, our focus, um, we didn't number a lot of cybersecurity, but our focus is more the cyberbullying. 
as we know that more than 112 million um, internet users in Indonesia, half of that population are young people, which is from 13 to 17 years old. Um, the issue is they are the biggest um, community when they are using the internet, but they understand less compared to the parents. Um, so we focus into cyberbullying by knowing that a mental health awareness um, starting from cyberbullying, um, especially the body shaming. So we had the first youth IGF um, Indonesia. We gather um, young people, university students, um, to create awareness to them, um, to identify what exactly the cyberbullying is, and um, to get to know whether um, this is, has been um, having the policy or not in Indonesia, and to tell them that the, the most important to, um, to go together and to prevent the cyberbullying is actually togetherness between peers, parents, uh, universities, schools, and uh, the whole civil society um, to against the cyberbullying. So, thank you. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Bernardo and I'm from Portugal. Uh, last month, on the October 15th, we organized the first IGF movement in Portugal. The, it was a debate on cybersecurity, privacy issues, and internet governance to a little too much to measure and gauge uh, what was the knowledge of the majority. It, this was, it was a meeting with mostly uh, university students. Um, we also are developing, uh, together with some members, uh, a, a game uh, called Cyber Detective, uh, with the intent of bringing more, raising awareness and uh, uh, giving solutions to people on um, several cybersecurity issues. Uh, this was for, for example, for students and people, but also to help train professionals in the area with uh, less knowledge. Thank you. So it's, I think it's. Uh, you know, it was a short presentation of the of the achievements. Maybe the delegation, you do have questions and would like to, to know more about these particular countries. Once again, we are lacking here uh, African continent. We're not able, um, due to the visa issues, actually to bring um, one of them here. And I know that, for example, Julie was uh, was visiting uh, Haiti and met the, the young people. So I don't know if you if you have questions, maybe the delegation, or you would like to, um, you know to bring this to the table and then they prepared the questions to you as well, I think. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's always been a great pleasure for me to engage with Youth IGF. I'm on the Education and Culture Committee in the European Parliament, so youth policy, uh, the future for young people, um, the kind of world that uh, you are going to inherit is really important for me and that you have, um, that you feel that you can shape that, that you can own it. Um, I think what I've been really impressed about with IGF, it, it's not just something, youth IGF I mean, it's not just something that happens once a year. It is a community that's um, operating and reaching out to one another always throughout the whole year. Uh, I have many opportunities to meet several of you um, at Youth IGF previously, but when I am on mission in other countries, I am reaching out. So, um, and I think would be interesting for the rest of my colleagues to know more about the benefits of the interactions that you have together. Um, and also why that's important that you're not just doing it online, okay? That you have the opportunity to come together in real time for, I don't know if they call, still call it flesh meetings, but when uh, the internet first, um, first arrived, um, we were um, always talking about can we have flesh meetings? And it's not something awful, <laughs> it's just the fact, it's just the real meetings that we have. Um, I, I think that would be I think that would be really useful. I just want to say something else. You know, we are from many different countries. We're from we represent many different committees. Okay, that's really important. But we also are on various delegations for relations with other country with other countries. So for example, I met the Haitian youth IGF because I was on mission 
um, as part of the Africa, Caribbean and Pacific delegations. So I think there are, there are many more opportunities for you to connect with European um, parliamentarians, EU parliamentarians, because of the fact that we go on missions to other countries, we have that responsibility. So I think more um, MEPs could be made aware of this, that you know, when you're in another, when you're in a country, get in touch with Yulia and she'll put you straight in touch with the IGF group that's in that country. But I think maybe just address that question about the added value, if you like, the benefits of you having your network and also the value of you not just being online all the time, but the value of you coming together in real time um, in, in person. Thank you, Julia. I think it was uh, um, your, your remark was uh, very interesting, and maybe the first question that can help, that can come: how the the young people and the community of these young people in different countries can be also useful, or maybe bring the the information, the inside from the youth communities in in different countries, uh, in your countries where you are uh, that you represent at the European Parliament, but also in the countries as you just said that you are visiting. So maybe they can bring, you know. Um, uh, the, 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 as I just said, the information, the facts uh, from these youth communi communities and to, um, to bring more detail on a particular topic that you are working on on this, on this country. So I think maybe it's the first question we can, we can ask. I, I think we have and then you, please. Right. Uh, so first of all, I think it's very important uh, to try to make uh, connections also with the young members of the parliament. It's uh, always a struggle to get uh, young people's opinions heard in policy discussions. I mean, our parliament is no exception. I think the, the average age is uh, over 50 years old. And uh, it can be difficult because uh, youth is also a relatively uh, small electoral group. But I think uh, we all have to recognize that uh, at the end of the day, the policies that we make today uh, will affect the, the, last, uh, the next uh, coming decades and the way that the Internet is going to develop. And I think uh, it is um, always useful to have kind of uh, uh, policy statements on the big discussions of the day, such as uh, data protection, net neutrality, uh, uh, cyberbullying and hate speech uh, from a youth perspective, but, uh, because uh, I think that uh, all of the political parties will have to confront that reality that the decisions that we make uh, today are not just for ourselves. And quite often uh, when I talk to colleagues, uh, when they really start paying attention to a topic that is important to young people is when they hear about it outside of their work. Like, for example, if their nephew or niece comes to them and tells them that they are very concerned about something that is uh, going on uh, in Internet policy, I think that can have a big impact. Um, but I think it's important also to realize when you speak to politicians that, uh, to some extent, uh, we are no longer up to date with uh, all the technology that is being used today. I mean, even uh, myself, I'm a bit over 30 and I feel like my social media use more or less stopped at the level of 2014 when I was elected to parliament because since then I have had less time to, to keep up with trends and to really know what is uh, uh, what developments are of concern to young people today. So uh, I found it very interesting to hear, for example, that uh, uh, body shaming is kind of a particular uh, form of uh, online harassment um, that a lot of young people have to deal with. So for us, these uh, kinds of uh, information are extremely important and I think it's uh, useful that we use fora like this to really talk about such uh, policy subjects where you would like to see action from policy makers. Thank you, Mrs. Schroeder. Um, uh, I do see we, we have Goran Marvi also joining us for, for the discussion with, with the young. Uh, maybe one of your colleagues would like to to comment uh, this question as well. I don't know if it's the case. Right. 
So, Ms. Mr. Goran, thank you. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> so we would like to, uh, we just made the introduction, we do have the, the members of the European Parliament here, we, and we have the young people that kindly, uh, and it was possible actually for them to, to make it uh, here and to be present at the IGF from five continents due to the ICANN support as well, we have to, to thank you. And so we have Maria from Ukraine, we have Junior from Haiti, we have Michael from Lebanon, Agita from Indonesia and Bernardo from, from Portugal. Uh, and so we uh, um, were explaining a little bit what was the Youth IGF movement about and that it was uh, practically, uh, it has been created in 2011 and we're, um, you know, presenting the achievements. And so maybe it will be interesting if each of you will present, you know, the burning issues that you have identified in your countries during the uh, national uh, event that you organized and recently the cybersecurity um, month's event uh, that you organized and maybe you can, uh, you know, in, in, in this sense, bring the content as well, and afterwards ask the question uh, to Mr. Marby as well to the to the delegation. Who is ready from you? Yes, please. So, uh, during the event we organized, uh, as I referred last October, one of the thing that, one thing that was very um, that, that we noticed was the lack of uh, knowledge on most privacy and security issues. For example, uh, of all present uh, students, none of them had an idea what cookies were, for example, or why they had that pop-up that appears that is now that is mandatory to appear and to say what data is being tracked and is being stored by the providers. And they had no idea what it was. They would accept it without reading all the time. Um, and also they had no idea what repercussions in the future that might have or what data they would be collected and what that data could be used for, for example. Uh, and I also said it was um, the main issue that I noticed with it is youth is using technology every day for almost uh, everything in their lives, but they, ha they don't have a conscience on what cybersecurity is and what uh, issues may arise from it. So, um, do, do we have another comment from another country? Agita, do you have, can you bring your concerns in your country? <coughs> Yeah, basically um, in Indonesia, um, the most important thing I think um, it's finding the right balance between human rights and um, cybersecurity itself. Because we speak about the human rights, there is a privacy, there is a right to speech, freedom to speech, um, but in the same time, there's a content control. Um, speaking about the multi-stakeholder, when, when we go to the technical community, um, they will be definitely very focused into um, technology infrastructure and uh, focusing into the right tools to um, filtering the content. But in terms of the government, we're looking for um, policy, which is Indonesia. We currently lack of the policy that can be, um, can be used as a cyber law or even, even right now we're still in a progress to make our own um, data privacy policy, our own GDPR. So um, the main concern, um, I guess, is uh, have a different visions of the multi-stakeholders in Indonesia um, to come up um, to, to, to create a better um, internet multi-stakeholders, um, per se. Thank you, Agita. Um, we, I think we have someone who asked for the floor. We also have one question uh, that uh, has been born, I think, to the European Union delegation. But maybe, uh, Mr. Marby, you would like to, to make the introduction or already you have thoughts on, um, on what they are doing, actually, in their countries. Thank you. Uh, I would be. I sort of feel that I should be sitting on that side because I feel a little bit older than you, slightly. There are no sides on the round table, you're right. Um, why are you sitting so far from each other, by the way? That's a good question. Hi, Gunnar. Hi, other ones. Could I, you know, um, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I mean, could I pick on some of the things you said, uh, which I think is essentially important? So I'll put that away. And one thing you said that it surprised you that people didn't even, even know what cookies was. And, and in my speeches over the last couple of months, I, I end all my speeches by saying that you should clean your underwear and your cash at least every week. 
because you, how often, anybody who cleaned their cache in their mobile web browser over the last five days can raise your hand. Before I joined ICANN, I was a telecom regulator, and we did a small experiment. We went in and looked at some of the cookies' lifetime. We found cookies that had a lifespan of 2,500 years. That's why, and, and do an experiment. Um, clean all your cache, go to an IP address you don't usually use, a Wi-Fi you don't use, and you make searches for, for instance, for barbed wire. I don't know if you usually buy barbed wires, I don't. And then you go to another country's web page, like a news story, and you will get, in your own language, uh, ads for that kind of equipment. Because that will follow you around. But it's also something else. The, the way Internet technology is built, it actually gives the end user a lot of responsibilities. Because you can improve your own protection quite much by cleaning your cache, uh, setting your web browser the right way, using what we call mid middle of man VPNs, so it takes away the sort of principle of who you are and where you go to. So, and these are easily measures that you can do. Make sure that your, your uh, system is updated. And that increases the security of yourself tremendously. But we don't talk about that, uh, which I agree with you. And, 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 and ICANN, who is a technical organization, we are not on the end user point. Uh, but we are starting to talk about it more because it's actually a big part of those problems. When we talk about cybercrime, we talk about, for instance, of infected computers. And the responsibility for an infected computer often lies with you. If you have this, uh, you know, if you upgrade your uh, operating systems, if you check on those, your computer will not be infected and therefore can't be used in a DDoS attack. Because DDoS attacks, when you have a lot of different computers, they're all infected. We have a small part in that. Because as the, uh, as the one who supplies the world with the domain name system, because you get an email where there's a link, and you see that link and you hit it because it seems like you're going to get a million dollars or something. And, and therefore, you got something downloaded on your PC, which is a virus, and that virus is used in an attack. And one of the things we're working with is to um, deliberately make sure that there are not too many bad domainers out there who are actually for... Uh, for reasons are selling uh, the ability for bad actors to do those things because it's a domain name you actually see. So that's the first thing I, I, I sort of want to point out when it comes to, to you know, your own responsibility. And I look at the politicians and I say, maybe that's something we can add to the, um, you know, how, what you teach at schools. We teach kids how to walk across the street. Maybe we should teach them how to use secure devices when they go online. When I want to learn something, I go to my son and he teaches me. The second thing, which is even sort of interesting, is that Internet, and I've seen this more and more, that when we talk about Internet, we talk about two different things. It seems like we in our heads divided Internet. And, and one Internet is the ones we use all the time. I bet everybody's sitting here and, and you know, doing chats and, and sending emails to your loved ones or you know, making arrangements for the dinner tonight. You know, whatever. We use internet as a methodology uh, for our own good. And then you have the other bad internet, where people post things that we don't like, or is using it for bad things that people don't like. And, and we often conflict those two. I mean, we are representing the, the sort of technical, in, uh, technical part of the internet for the domain name system and, 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 and the IANA functions. The problem is, it's the same system. <laughs> So the, the same system that gives you the ability to go online and do something which you think is good, it's the same system some people is doing something bad with. And, and what we've seen over the last couple of years is that, of course, elected po politicians around the world is now looking at it. You know, you, you talked about bad content, um, whatever that is. And we, I think there are things that we can agree upon. But some of the legislative proposals we've seen, who, takes, who wants to take if that away, um, actually ends up could mean that people cannot connect to the internet and cannot send information between each other. We also see in the, uh, sometimes in the technical specifications on new equipment, especially mobile, often talked about 5G, that they want to take away what we call the internet. They want to have something else because there's so many bad things there. Internet has been a very, I mean, the, the domain system has been very successful. We've grown it from no one 
to 3.4 or 4.3, I can't remember, billion users around the world in, in about 20 years with no hiccups. And I think it's fair to discuss many of those things. I think it's even important for elected officials around the world to have a look of the, because internet has a social impact. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, we are not a political organization. But at the same time, we have to make sure that it doesn't take away what I believe and I work for, the interconnectivity of internet itself. Because I do this and my team do this because we think when people connect on the internet, something magical happens. So this means that our work and your work is not done. I mean, I was, I was, so I can just uh, celebrate this 20th anniversary. 20 years, nothing. That means that I was 35 years old when ICANN was formed. I'm old. And in a very short time period, this has happened and start people to see that we've done, we've done everything with the internet. But apart from the fact that we have still a couple of billion users we would have, like to have connected on the system, we have not made all the decisions and all the policies going forward. We still have an enormous amount of questions we have to answer ourselves and we do all mistakes. I mean, when we, and legislation now has an impact on how we can do things. So that's why it's important for ICANN, for instance, to bring in younger people, whatever the definition is. When do you stop being young, by the way? Is there an age? <laughs> My think kids think that I'm very old. I think we have the definition of the European Union, right? Th 35, is it in the European Union? Are you young under 35? <laughs> That I'm going to tell my oldest daughter. She thinks she's old. She's 27. <laughs> to end this, just to give you a practical example. Internet, the, 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 the technical infrastructure of Internet is built around transparency and accountability. Because it's been so important in this setup that if anyone acts on the Internet as a part of this, you should know who it is. And the reason for that is you want to be able to go after bad actors. We see that in the thousands of databases that we have publicly on the internet so you can always know who to contact if something goes wrong. Here comes GDPR. And we don't have an opinion about GDPR as a legislation. GDPR has helped at least me and my community to talk more about privacy. But it's also the fact that inside us, inside our systems, for instance, uh, in policies set by ITF, there are names because we will, everybody wants to know who writes the standard so it's not, we know it's not a bad intent. We store those information for a very long time. We have another one which is called the WHOIS system, which is not all internet users of the world, but everybody's a domain name system, which is often used, for instance, for in anti-abuse work. So right now, I think we have to continue our work to make sure that we don't break what is essentially is for transparency and accountability. And no one can say that we have all the answers. So our methodology of this bring us enough, bring people in from all parts, all parts of the community, you know, young, old, different countries, different backgrounds, different ways of looking at it, and try to find a consensus going forward. But it won't be easier now when you have legislation. So I picked on both of your things. No one has the answers. Walk in and have those opinions because your voice counts in this. And be, help us to shape not only the existing 4.2 billion users, whatever it is, but also the next billion users because we have many, many challenges to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marby. I think you, it, it was a lot of things that you, uh, that you put on the table, very, very important issues. And actually about the, uh, the voice of the young, I think you have to advertise your t-shirts, which is every voice counts. And actually, the, yes, sure, we, will, we will make sure that you have one of these. Um, and I think uh, Bernardo from Portugal was saying something uh, to me when you raised the, the question of cookies and actually this is the, the most burning question if you want to, to, and we wanted to present this to the European Parliament as well actually, the, this tool and I think it's a good momentum. So as I was, I referred in my presentation and now to uh, we'll do so again. Um, we are developing with some former students of our university back in Portugal a game called Cyber Detective. Uh, which uh, has that the, um, in the intent of educating people on these matters. For example, the, the first prototype presents a phishing case, uh, shows what happened, how it happened, and then helps the person try to discover 
where to go to, how to solve this issue, how to get, he, in, in that case, it is a, um, he, the person gets a, his phone infected and uh, with a, um, with a malware which, which encrypts all the device, uh, ransomware, uh, and uh, it, it, how to go to the authorities, how to recover data. Um, and our idea is be beyond educating the masses with, uh, with this kind of tool, is also to educate um, law enforcement, for example, which many times they don't know how to proceed in these cases. Uh, we're also looking for political support for the development and the distribution of this because we believe it would be, for example, for schools it would be a good way, as he was referring, uh, perhaps in schools we need to start teaching cybersecurity. Uh, we believe that it might be, for example, one good, a good tool to, to do so. I, I don't know if uh, the European delegation of Mr. Marby would like to, to react on this, if you have maybe questions that, uh, to the young people that they were born already. Um, I see many, many hands on this side, the willingness to comment and maybe to also give some answers that in the EU we have had also uh, issue of cookies on the legislative table. I don't know if Julia was it involved on. Okay, okay, then. But we, we have uh, Jana first and then uh, Gunnar and then uh, Julia. So if it's okay, three on the row. Yes, sure. Yes, please. Good. It's we were. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Uh, now, I have a mother, she is 86 years old, and she is really active in Facebook. Yesterday in the evening, she called me and said, Yana, I've broken my Facebook. I posted a photo, and there were only three likes under it. Uh, so, uh, and my uh, younger son, who is 12 years old, uh, he was able to explain what's going on. Uh, but. Uh, I have a feeling that we have like several uh, vulnerable groups in the internet and uh, I would not exclude these uh, old ladies like my mom. I, I understand that we're speaking with young people but uh, anyway, uh, they are those who, uh, who are eager to believe this fake news like, like this. Uh, but if we're speaking about, I was happy to, to listen about this. Uh, Several of you mentioned we have to teach it at school. Uh, I believe that in December, European Parliament will adopt uh, only an own initiative, but still report, uh, and which I'm rapporteur in. Uh, this is about education in digital uh, era. And uh, this is exactly about the thing that we have in European Union. Uh, we have several problems. The first one, everybody knows that if you graduate from school, uh, it's absolutely clear that you have uh, uh, you're supposed to have a certain set of skills in maths, in languages, in history, but not in IT. There is just, uh, just no description what are basic or not basic digital skills. Uh, another thing is that we don't have a professional uh, description of what is IT teacher. Uh, sometimes these are just people who are doing programming somewhere, then they come to school, then they teach something, they go away and so on and so forth. It just doesn't work in a proper way. And the result is that uh, even Julia Reda, we all know who is Julia Reda when she's got elected to the parliament. Now she said that she, she's just kind of uh, lagging behind in her social media, uh, which, which happened during four years. Sorry for bringing you as an example, but. Uh, and the main point is that we have to uh, learn, uh, to teach people how to, how to learn for the whole of their life. Uh, this is not a toy, this is a tool. But we have really lack of teachers who, who are able to use this tool and who understand how to do it. And this is the main problem which we have to address in, in European Union and whatever. But uh, on the other hand, we all know that uh, education is maybe one of most conservative things ever. Where, where in Paris, in France, uh, in the, if I remember properly, in uh, French schools, uh, it's not allowed to enter to lesson with your mobile phone. I'm not uh, going to criticize this decision or making, um, making decision if it is right or if it is wrong, but it, it still obviously doesn't work. And if our children are uh, sleeping with them, we have to teach them how to do it in, in, in a proper way. And uh, I believe that maybe this report and this approach will be kind of first step. Uh, but the problem is that uh, these things are developing really fast. And we, we have to teach them at school like every day. And uh, 
another thing is that uh, your young people and what uh, uh, Julia Watt said about these uh, meetings, these decision makers, uh, and Julia was right, we are kind of a little bit older than you. And uh, uh, we had this big discussion about copyright, about AVMS and other things, but I had a feeling that these discussions are uh, moving in parallel. We are old-fashioned paper newspaper readers, and you are somewhere internet, and there is a lack, really lack of link uh, between generations. Uh, and it's really sad to see that, uh, yes, there are like six young people on the other side of, the, of this big circle table, and we, uh, yes, old, old politicians kind of. So please be more active and uh, uh, write and uh, uh, help us uh, to reach uh, young people and, and children. This is really important. Thank you. Thank you so much for this comment. I think it was another member of the European Parliament who wanted to, to take the floor. Please. Thank you very much. My name is Gunnar Hekmar from Sweden. Uh, and I'm sitting here and reflecting about the way we are talking about uh, the Internet. And I think a huge problem lies in the fact that too many too often tend to think about internet as a special thing, dramatic thing, um, magic or mysterious or something very futuristic, instead of understanding that this is in the main core of our society today. This is how we trade, this is how we learn, this is how we follow media, this is how we socialize, etc. And, and I think a lot of the problems that you have raised and that are raised everywhere about um, bullying on the net or about um, cyber security is in some way to understand that the internet must be seen as a quite normal thing, that the rules we have in society needs to be applied on the internet as well. But instead, we very often do the other thing around. We try to regulate the Internet in order to achieve something that is maybe not the first-hand problem. I think if anyone is bullying someone else, I mean, then we need to have enforce the rules we have in society. Fake medicine, the same thing. It is no difference between fake medicine on the Internet and fake medicine in a shop or in a close to the harbor somewhere where someone is hiding and trying to, to, to market fake, fake medicine, etc., etc. So I think that um, the main progressive step would be to start to understand that this is the, way, the a core and main part of our society. Also meaning that, of course, education must be about how you safeguard yourself on the net. Uh, regarding uh, cookies and regarding all the other things about uh, not only washing your clothes but also uh, emptying the, the coach, etc. So, so I think in, in some way a lot of people always want to do this as a thing about generations. I think this is much more about how close we are to the internet and how we use the internet. Uh, and a problematic thing is that Far too many people still believe that the Internet is a very, very special thing instead of understanding that this is the way we work and the way we read and socialize. And at the same time, as we are not understanding the impact that the Internet makes everything much more accessible, much faster, and you can distribute things much more. It is free to distribute, so to say. And we need to understand this logic in order to safeguard that the normal rules of our society can be enforced on the net. And if we have that approach, I think a lot of the problems that you are raising, and we all are raising, can be solved in a quite undramatic way. Thank you once again. Do uh, I wanted to come back to on uh, the, the question raised uh, by the colleague from Indonesia about uh, the balance between human rights and uh, protecting people online. I think this is a very important 
um, discussion that we are also having on a daily basis. And I think it's important not to look for very simplistic solutions because sometimes we come up with an idea and we end up hurting the people that we are trying to protect. So for example, uh, in Germany where I'm from, we had a big discussion about a real name policy. This was also a big, a big issue on Facebook, whether people have to use their real name when they communicate online. And the theory was that if you force everybody to disclose their identity, then they will behave properly. But uh, actually what we are seeing is that a lot of people are completely comfortable to post racist comments and sexist comments under their real name because they know it will not have legal consequences. But the victims actually are very afraid of using, for example, social media under their real names if they're a victim of stalking, for example. So I think it's always important to kind of look at it from these both sides. And um, you mentioned content filtering in particular, and there I have a very strong opinion, which is that content filtering does not work. Uh, we are, I think, putting too much, too much trust into technology to make very difficult decisions about right and wrong. So just to give you a few examples, um, in the discussion about terrorist content online, we have seen some uh, online platforms uh, automatically remo removing documentations of uh, um, human rights violations in Syria because there was a Daesh flag somewhere or something that automatically made it look like uh, terrorist propaganda when actually it was the exact opposite. It was the doc documentation of terrorist crimes. Or uh, another example was that uh, recently we received quite a lot of complaints from Twitter users in Bulgaria. Uh, now Bulgaria is a regular country in the EU and uh, one of the things that is different from other countries is that they use the Cyrillic alphabet so they don't uh, uh, communicate in uh, the Latin alphabet that is mo used in most European countries and in the US. So uh, the automatic algorithms identified a lot of Bulgarian Twitter users as Russian bots because they were using the Cyrillic alphabet and uh, uh, they might be mentioning some popular accounts. So these kinds of mistakes can happen really quickly if there is no human control. And uh, I think it's also important to recognize that uh, these filters are not created in a vacuum. They are uh, written by people, by software engineers, who have their own biases. And usually they are rich, white, and male, and they may not have the same perspectives as, as everybody else. So I'm very skeptical towards trying to solve social problems with technology, which is a bit also the point that Guna made, that if we have uh, a social problem such as bullying or harassment and we don't have the social norms in place in a society that we uh, actually want to protect the victims, then trying to find a technological fix for it is not going to work. Thank you so much for, for, for this statement. I don't know if uh, other members of the European Parliament uh, would like to make uh, their comments. Um, if you allow me, I would like just to follow what you just said about the, um, the victims and it's one of the issues which came from the majority of events organized in the countries by the youth IGF on cyber security. Actually, it's a victim protection. I would like really to call on the European Parliament to help because we don't really have the, the policy mechanism today on how to protect the victims of the cyber, cyber crime uh, victims online. And this is uh, which came regularly from these meetings and, uh, and we think very important would like to bring to you um, in, in the area where you, you, you can do something and actually from legal and policy perspective. Um, and if you allow us also to take the call um, um, that the colleague of yours just, uh, just said about the education and allow us actually to send you this prototype for, uh, on educational purposes of the cyber detective, I think the, the young people from Portugal would be more than happy to, uh, to, to, you know, to spread this and to have your opinion and also to see how it can be used and incorporated by the, uh, by the policy mechanisms as well. Um, I think uh, we, we, we do have a few minutes left. I need to uh, introduce, because the lady and the youth IGF chat was somewhere lost in the room, just to, to introduce quickly and then go, um, maybe go to, the, um, to your comment and then we introduce the youth IGF chat and then we have one question from Lebanon and we have to, to close practically. Thank you. Please, sir. 
Thank you. I'm Jonathan Bullock. Uh, I represent UKIP in the United Kingdom, member of the EFDD group. Uh, I just want to sort of reiterate uh, and support what uh, Julia uh, uh, said there, because uh, uh, often things are done with the best of intention and create a far worse situation. Uh, for example, many politicians throughout Europe now are, in my view, quite rightly concerned about the issue of immigration, uh, yet because they're concerned about immigration, and want to talk about this issue, uh, they sometimes get either no platformed or stopped from talking about it, uh, which is, you know, totally against freedom of speech uh, and a problem. For, for example, in the UK, we've had a problem with grooming gangs in small towns, which are mainly uh, of Muslim uh, uh, background, uh, and uh, uh, this is a serious issue, but because people are so scared of political correctness and so scared of saying the wrong thing on the internet, Internet or, or, or what have you, the issue has been buried rather than talked about and solved. So uh, I want to support uh, what's being said about the uh, th things often going wrong when things are done with the best of intention but end up banning uh, in a way free speech or, or an approach. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, and, uh, and uh, I think we, we agree. I would like just uh, quickly, you have two questions, I don't know about the, the time which is, was foreseen by the delegation. I would like just quickly to introduce from uh, the colleague from Chad, she would like just to say, you know, at least introduce yourself, uh, if you can take just quickly. Bonjour tout le monde, moi je parle en français. Bon, je m'appelle Bouchra Nasr Ousselat, je représente le IOS IGF Tchad. Chez nous au Tchad, récemment, nous avons organisé euh, une élection libre et transparente pour élire un nouveau membre du bureau exécutif de IOS IGF Tchad. Nous avons aussi organisé un forum pour sensibiliser les jeunes, surtout sur les questions sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Les jeunes aujourd'hui au Tchad, ils ont un sérieux problème par rapport à la cybersécurité et à la cybersexualité. Donc ils sont confrontés à des différents problèmes. Et là, nous essayons à travers le bureau de IOS IGF Tchad de remédier un peu ce genre de problèmes. Merci. I think I have to translate, I'm sorry. There is no translation, but I will take this responsibility. <laughs> and uh, practically, um, yeah, they, they, are, um, they are mostly uh, fluent in, in French. So in Chad, uh, she was saying she represents the youth IGF Chad, and they, uh, it was uh, their third edition already this year uh, that they have uh, organized and um, elected a new committee as well. And the last activity was the also on awareness raising on safe and responsible use of the internet, which is a big concern in Chad as well. So as we can see it's not only the European uh, element, but uh, all over the world, obviously. Um, uh, I think, Michael, quickly from Lebanon, you want to bring um, just, if, just one, two sentences, please. Yes. Well, uh, ahead of the uh, issues, technical issues and infected devices, uh, our main concerns are uh, identity theft and uh, the freedom of speech on social media. Uh, in Lebanon, we have a lack of legislation about these issues, and the people are confusing between the freedom of speech and uh, insulting each other. So I would like to know how, how are you dealing with this in the European countries? Thank, thank you, Michael, for, for a quick uh, question. And I think, Agita, you wanted to raise a question as well. And so afterwards, we will be going to the delegation and we'll be closing. Agita, please, quickly. Yeah, um, I would like to um, probably add a statement from Julia from the European uh, Parliament from Germany. But I completely agree because uh, right now, I guess, Internet is no longer as a technology tool, but more than like a social phenomena, which is, um, I completely agree with um, the issue that we are having right now, instead of making um, tools for filtering a content online, but giving awareness to the young people. Um, but in here also, um, especially in a developing country, speaking about Indonesia, well, I mean, I think as the young people, we would like to have an internet um, 
still open and inclusive, which is very important to have a collaborations. As we know, the internet is still a digital divide is still a very huge issue in Indonesia. Whether um, people in a very eastern of in, or very western of Indonesia knowing about internet, knowing about the social media, but they have no idea how to use it wisely. So um, the collaborations, I do believe the collaborations between the government, um, the private sector, the academia, and then us as a civil um, society is a very important to, to actually uh, make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Agita. Uh, we, we are back to the, uh, to the European Parliament delegation, um, Julie, and uh, if we have other questions as well. Um, I think there's... There, there are the, the public sphere, wherever it is, is a place for conversation, for discussion, dis debate, free speech, people to um, present their views. That's really important, and we need citizenship education. And in, in generally, we need more citizenship education in order for people to understand um, that that is part of how you have a more connected, more engaged, more participative society. I think what has been happening is that there have been many, there has been a lot of um, false accusations about things, there's been such a lot of fake news. You see what is happening in the UK, what is happening with the Trump elections, which is this interference on the internet from foreign governments, the large platforms flooding um, people's um, gadgets with all kinds of um, with all kinds of um, mistruths, all kinds of encouragements for hatred, and this was even true in the Brazil elections recently. Um, I do a lot of work in Brazil, so I know there it wasn't so much Facebook; it was actually WhatsApp messages which were encouraging people. Um, and so. When, and what I'm really worried about is you have violence online, you have violence and threats online and people feeling that this is a space where they can maybe say the things that they wouldn't say um, face to face to each other. But, sometimes, but when politicians are making these kinds of untrue um, statements and they're encouraging, it actually um, it gets whipped up by the right-wing press, I'm afraid, and then it ends up in real violence. And that's, I think, where the internet, where what is happening on the internet has, a, there's a real responsibility, actually, from everybody at all levels, from people on the ground right through to the policy makers and the elected politicians to really behave in a much more, um, in a much more considered way about the way that they are speaking about things. You know, uh, so for me, I think citizenship education and including in that um, digital and media literacy so that people can be really, really informed about what is real, what is not, and about their responsibilities. And I'm very proud that in my region in the northwest of England, at Salford University, they had a, a, a research program um, with young people about fake news, about, um, about cyber security, which I can share with you if I, um, I'll put a link up um, uh, to it so that you can look at it on my Twitter feed, okay? Uh, it was reported by a really excellent magazine called The Conversation, which is an online magazine that um, uh, works with experts, and it's very important that we continue to work with experts. It works with experts um, uh, in, from the academic world who are having uh, their papers, their discussions, their, their debates um, published in a very... Uh, um, you know, in a very open way. So it's not, not like you're an academic and you have to get access to really complicated papers. They're written in a very digestible form for everybody to look at. I'd also like to say that I was speaking at Goldsmiths University last Monday on um, human rights and technology. So there's a new think tank at Goldsmiths called uh, Britain in Europe, which is really concerned about a lot of the freedoms and the human rights and citizenship issues which are really relevant to, the Europe to European values right now. Thank you so much, Julie. Uh, do we have other comments from the delegation or maybe from... No, conference? it's just like, look, we are over time and there is right. an opening ceremony with the president of the country and, and exactly. the secretary general starting. So I want to thank on behalf of our delegation and just like that, not everything can be legislated. So now we have the new forums and at least it brings a lot 
the, the big community that we can all share. So it brings also the uh, responsibility of everyone joining that one. It's not only nationality, it's uh, our global internet. But I, I think the best hint I've heard that we all, all can start from the thinking that what we put online, that is it something that you would like to your daughter to see and read? Because uh, it's it's common face for uh, fair <coughs> for everyone, so sometimes there's something that uh, you can talk among the peop uh, old people, or you may, you may talk among the you know your fellows. But uh, it, it turns out to be not uh, respecting the freedom of speech if you insult and uh, other people or group or individuals, and that is I think the best way to make a difference when it's uh, using the. The right to speech and uh, propose your own opinion and then when it's con uh, really discriminating the human rights of the others. But thank you so much for a very uh, interesting topics that you brought on board in this meeting and good luck for your future job as well. Thank you. And we have to thank the delegation for accepting um, and for being here with us as well at the ICAN CEO. And I think um, it was uh, the great world responsibility. And if we can repeat these kind of meetings to make a, um, you know, a tradition of this, uh, it will be great for the young people. Thank you again. And if you uh, just will um, just give us two minutes to take a photo together, it will be it will be great as well. Thank you.